Welcome back to Free Speech Nation. Concerns are currently being raised by athletes about plans by governing body World Athletics, which would allow transgender women to compete in female track and field events. A final decision is expected in March, with the governing body saying they will potentially continue using testosterone limits as their basis for inclusion. Other sports have banned transgender athletes from participating at the top level if they've gone through any part of the process of male puberty. So to discuss this issue, I'm joined by two-time British champion shot putter, Amelia Strickler. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, thank you. So let's start with uh, your own experience. And obviously, as, a, as a, uh, a top athlete, it's really important, isn't it, that you are competing against the other women? Yes, 100%. You know, the, the male shot putters that I've, you know, trained with, been on the circuit with, it's just a different level than the, the women, the women shot putters. So it would be a massive, massive disadvantage to us if any were to, you know, decide one day they, they needed to change gender. So when did you decide to speak out about this? I mean, there have been some athletes, people like Mariam Uchi and Martina Navratilova, who have spoken out, Sharon Davis being another example, getting a lot of flack for doing so. Uh, so you must have been aware that there would be that possibility of a, a bit of pushback. Yes, of course. I, you know, I was asked to do an interview for the Telegraph and I, you know, I, I too thought I would get so much hate for it online and I actually got so much support. Ready? So, so many parents, you know, thank you from my daughters, you know, I don't want my daughters to have to go through this or people's personal experiences of I've had to compete in park runs against, you know, males who are now identifying as women and I'm not getting the true results that I, I deserve, that I've worked for, because even though it's a park run, you know, surely that, that, that matters to some people. That's their competitive, you know, that's their competitive sport. And I just think it would, yeah, it's just been such a nice response, to be honest. Yes. Yeah, I'm thrilled about it. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of people also interpret this kind of statement, saying that we want single-sex sports as being transphobic or coming from a place of hate. What do you make of that accusation? I mean, I, I think it's almost anger towards towards us and it I, I don't feel like I'm I would you know discriminate against anyone I mean I throw a metal ball for my job um, who am I to you know tell people how to live but I just think you know it's it's not about not including people it's just about protecting the women's category and the female sex so they can still be included there's talks of an open category for example so you know that you know they would still be included, and it's not it's not an exclusion. It's just protecting the women's category, so we're not seeing records, sponsors, winnings going you know to biological males for women's events. And my understanding is, I mean, the current system where it's about uh, testosterone suppression, that actually isn't necessarily sufficient, is it? No, there's a there's so many research articles. I think there's at least 17 to date that have basically said. If they've gone through male puberty, you know, the suppressors or keeping testosterone at a lower level is not going to undo those male advantages. You know, you can't undo bone size and heart size and lung capacity and, you know, hip angles, et cetera. There's so many examples where you just you just can't undo that. And they're just at such an advantage. And we see in sport, um, you know, there's even some things on Twitter right now that are, you know, Dina Asher Smith, one of the <laughs> best 100 meter runners in the world would finish, you know, eighth in the U17 boys category in the U, just in the UK. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know I mean, how can you argue with statistics like that? That's, that's, you know, so dev that would be devastating for women's sport if it got to that. I've seen a lot of people, though, take issue with the statistics or just simply deny them. You know, for instance, people saying, well, there aren't many uh, trans athletes taking all the medals. That's not happening. What do you say when people say that? Um, it is happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Laurel Hubbard from New Zealand took a woman's place at the Olympics. Yeah. I was denied the Olympics in 2021 simply because my governing body didn't want to take me. Yeah. I know how it feels to be denied an Olympics, so I know someone at home is, you know, was sat at home during that Olympics that, you know, could have been there. Yeah. So, you know, it is happening at elite level in swimming as well in the U.S. and in high school sports, which high school sports in the U.S. get you into, you know, coll great colleges and universities on scholarships, et cetera. So it is, it is ultimately happening and women are losing out right now. And we've seen, you know, as you mentioned, Laurel Hubbard, there was also the case of Leah Thomas, the swimmer, who went from, I think, roughly 592nd in the ranking to number one yeah. overnight. And of, and of course, when that happens, it, 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 it opens people's eyes, doesn't it? It's very prominent. When you see someone on the, on the podium towering over the competitors. Yeah, you know. I mean, of course. It, it certainly would be the reverse if I were to, you know, be, decide one day, you know, that I wanted to transition to a man. It just wouldn't work, you know, in the reverse. And I just think... 
you know, we've got so much, you know, data and, you know, there's more studies being done now. It just, there's just such an advantage there. And that's a prime example of, you know, retaining male advantage. And how about younger athletes, yeah, girls who want to become professional athletes? You know, there's a lot of pressure, isn't there, to not register an objection about this stuff? Yes, I, I agree. A lot of parents have messaged me saying my daughter has had to compete against a boy and she was absolutely like devastated when she didn't, you know, get the results she wanted, et cetera. And I yeah. just think it would, you know, we could be missing out on the next, you know, great British sports star if, you know, you have, you know, children's dream, dreams devastated, to be honest, because yes. they're, they're not getting the results they wanted. They could leave the sport, et cetera. It's, it all adds up and it's a ripple effect for everyone. Do you think things are changing and moving in the right direction? I mean, those accusations that these kind of objections that you're raising are because of hate, bigotry and all of that kind of thing, they're just not washing anymore. People, are, pe Because people can see it's just not fair and that that is what it's really about. Yeah, it's just about fairness. It's not about hate at all, honestly. We, we want them to be included, but fairly in an open category just to protect the female, the female category. And that's, so this open category, the, the, uh, Athletics UK has said that that's what they want to go for, an yes. open category. That was, so there'll be a, a male category, female category, and an open category where anyone could participate irrespective of their sex. Do you think that could work on a practical basis? Um, well, it would actually be a female category and an open category, no male category. Okay. So, so um, I mean, I think personally, I mean, I, I personally, that's a great solution. I, right now, to compete, they'd have to suppress testosterone levels to certain levels. With an open category, I'm wondering if they would do away with that so they could keep their biological, you know, testosterone levels normal, per yes. se, for, for that per individual. And um, I, I think that would be a great idea, you know, to let them be included, but not, you know, put women at a disadvantage. Yes. And do you think with all these other developments that are happening in Scotland when it comes to the gender recognition bill and this kind of thing, that actually we're moving into a position where we can sort of talk about the necessity for recogn recognising biological sex and how women's rights are always affected by this? Yes, I, I, I would agree with that completely. I think we do need to protect women's rights and protect you know, women's privacy completely. We, I just think... Are, are the ones being put at a disadvantage in, in those instances. Have you had any sort of flack about this which you found uncomfortable? Um, obviously, you do yeah. get a few people who, you know, want to, you know, name call, et cetera, on social media. But it, it really isn't about that. It, it really is just to keep, you know, sport fair. And I've had so much, like, 99% positive support, to be honest. It has been so amazing. The par everyone that's reached out has been so kind and, you know, thank you for doing this. Thank you for my daughters and my nieces, except, like so many parents. It is so, so, so sweet. Well, this is, I suppose, the thing of, uh, of having the majority view, but that only a minority are willing to express. I suppose that's where we're at. <laughs> yes, it? it is a bit difficult. But, uh, Amelia Strickler, really appreciate you coming on and talking to us about this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs>